and welcome to uh, the Wednesday Week podcast uh, and our off shoot from the podcast, which is my Wednesday. Um, I am absolutely privileged today to be in uh, presence of a man who is a music legend in Sheffield. Um, and he has uh, his bands, uh, to name a few, uh, Milburn, uh, The Book Club, Good Cop, Bad Cop. Um, I think you were at some point you were in Reverend the Makers, Makers at some point, and then obviously your Christmas show, which goes down in legends now. Uh, it's uh, Joe Carnell. How are you doing, Joe? I'm all right, mate. I'm sure your listeners are going to be gutted. It's not Richard Orley after that build up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we keep trying. So if you've got his number, mate, you know, we'd be more than welcome. I don't think he can work a laptop, mate, or the internet. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do a face to face with him. So. So, Joe, thanks for coming on. Um, it's it's brilliant that you're here. Um, we could talk about the music, I'm sure, but uh, to be honest, last time I saw you was actually at Christmas Do last year, and I think I saw you for five minutes because I've been out since half past three, and uh, okay. I was so drunk I ended up falling out the door and getting a taxi home. So I'm sure That's you were really good. I, I was I was amazing, mate. I was absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind that. It's Christmas time, isn't it? I, I get it. I get it. It's, um, yeah, I'd it's waited good. bloody three years or two years to see you because you're obviously you've been cancelled with COVID, etc. So it's I'll be back for Christmas anyway. Yeah, you're not getting your 20 quid back, mate. You'll have to try again. Oh, oh, crap. Anyway, right. So to Wednesday, something more important to Wednesday. So um, you are amongst many uh, music stars who live in Sheffield who are Wednesday fans. Yes. Um, and... I'd like to just go, let's go way, way, way back. When did you first start becoming aware of Sheffield Wednesday? When did you uh, first start going? Who who was responsible for making you a Wednesday night? Um, like everybody else, not everybody else, but most others, um, it was my dad. My dad and my granddad, big Wednesday nights. Um, my dad, I mean, like a lot of that generation, uh, my dad's uh, 60 now. But he was spoilt rotten, the likes of Waddle and Hurst and Sheridan um, and Nielsen and, and all the rest. Um, so he obviously grew up with Wednesday. And then that the, the peak of the early 90s coincided with him being mid-30s and having a couple of young kids. I mean, I was a bit too young uh, to go to the big days out in the early 90s. I do remember, actually, one of my earliest memories is, is not going to Wembley. Um, so it must have been 93 and I was six. It could have, oh. been, could have been 91, but I would have been four. So it's either of those. I think it's the last, I think it's 93. Um, because I remember getting up on the, it must have been the Saturday or Sunday morning, you tell me. Um, but my brother and my dad had gone to London and it was just me and my mum. And I couldn't really figure out what had gone on. But my, my next memory of that day is me dressed head to toe in a Wednesday kit. My face was made of blue and white. My hair was blue and white. And uh, my payoff, because I didn't really understand what was going on, I was pretty young, was that I got to spend the equivalent of the ticket money in Toys R Us. So I went to <laughs> Toys R Us that day in a full, fully garbed up in Wednesday gear. I do remember that. I don't remember anything about the game. We must have watched it at some point, but I was just so young. But my brother went, so that's the thing he's always got on me. He went down to Wembley and I never did. The, the original, oh. And the proper Wembley. Do you remember what you bought from Toys R Us? No, I knew that would come in. I think it had been some sort of Transformer. That's oh. what I'm doing. It would have been some... I mean, you'd get a decent toy for, like, whatever the price of a ticket back then. But um, I I've still got... That a myth I've that still, I was missing out on something. I've still got in the loft the tickets from uh, 91 and all the 93s. So, obviously, there was four games in 93, wasn't there, with the, the semi-final against United... I think the league, game league. Game. yeah, yeah. I think the whole is it, Toys R Us would have been dead because the whole of Sheffield were were down in um, were down in London. Don't rub it in, mate, because I wasn't. Right? <laughs> Sorry, so <laughs> I had the run of the store to myself. So, so, so going on from that, do you, do you remember who was your sort of real first love of a, a, a football player? We, we've all got our first sort of no, right, football yeah. player, Wednesday player specifically, who we fell in love with and probably had the name on the back of a shirt. Yeah, it's weird because it was so drummed into me that there was loads of players early on, but none 
that I really knew of. I just so for example, I think the first name I had on the back of his shirt was David Hurst. It was number nine Hurst. It was that um yellow one with purple pinstripes. I do, Hurst. yeah, I remember that. First yeah. name on the back, I love that shirt. Came on this is another annoying story. I'm kill my mum for this. Came home one day, in fact, I'll get my cousin to listen to this. Came home one day, my mum had cleared my football shirts out. I was like, oh. I don't know, at the time. And uh, she'd given that shirt, which I idolised, to my little cousin. And the next oh. time I went around visiting, he was wearing it, and I still want to kill him to this day. So, James, if you're listening, <laughs> still not forgiven me. Um, so, Hearst was the first name on the back, but if, if I'm totally honest, I was just going through the motions of being... Obviously, I know now David Hearst was a great player. I've seen enough, but I, the only thing I remember about Hearst is really never seeing him because he was always injured. I remember him <laughs> once. We, were, we had season tickets on the north, and I remember him warming up before a game because we were back from another injury. And my dad were like so excited, um, you know, saying he's there, he's there, he's in the flesh. But I can never really remember anything about him playing. Um, my first real, real idols were probably the Canio and Carboni. I'm from that era where we just. I can remember when they first came and they were warming up at. Uh, before the match, I think we went up. This is when you know when you get all your memories and your history confused. There is a there's yeah, a true yeah. story in here somewhere. <laughs> we went up to Newcastle, um, and it was we went. I think we went two seasons on the trot. One of them, we went top of the league. Um, yeah, yeah. David Fleet. Yeah, yeah. Peter Atherton scored. Were we, were we in green? We we'll have to fact check this, but I'm sure Peter Atherton yeah. scored ahead in front of the away fans. Went absolutely ecstatic. And I think it was the next year that we were up away again at Newcastle. We were in Orange and Carboni scored the overhead kick. Again, these are the memories that I just, I could spend five minutes Googling all this. I'm so sure <laughs> Wednesday Geek will fill you in. But of course, that's the thing with memories, isn't it? They all bleed into one another, one another and it doesn't really matter. The truth's not. No. You don't let the truth get in the way of good, good dollop of nostalgia. Um but I, what I remember is watching those two. I think one of those games, it must have been the second one because they were both played in the orange kit, um, warming up before the match. And I'd never seen anyone handle a football like those two sort of football aliens could do because, you know, we were used to British footballers who were great, but it was, the, I suppose, just the start of the influx of foreigners into the game where you got you know, those amazing French players at Arsenal, the amazing Italians at Chelsea, and, and we had one or two of our own. We also had Blinker, didn't we, from Celtic did, yeah. as well. Yeah, just that, the way of like, oh my God, these are amazing footballers. And I mean, I know since Cabo and Di Canio have not really gone down too well with certain sections, but as a as a 12-year-old, 10-year-old watching football, I didn't really care for any of that back then. I was just, you know, you just want to be entertained at that stage. And then, let's face it, it was all downhill for a long time for my <laughs> lot. So you you old a lot, don't know how bloody lucky you were. <laughs> I remember when the Italians came in, obviously, there's that iconic picture, isn't there, where we signed them and they got pizza. that raw pizza. Um, but, yeah, but but you're right. At that time, the, the foreign influx of players was slowly starting to come in. Um, obviously, Cantona was weaving his magic over in Man at Manchester United. And like you yeah, say, we, we, the French, yes, the French that's players. That's yeah. We, yeah, we couldn't trust there's so many different stories because there was a there was a video on um, Twitter this week of them interviewing him. Uh, yes. I can't remember who was interviewing him, and he was wearing a shirt, and he was saying about that. But then, when you read some of the books, he was never touted to play for Wednesday. He was always there to come to either Leeds or Manchester United, but it's always yeah. a really difficult one. But I remember the Carboni and Di Canio coming, and and I was in my twenties at that point, and I remember thinking these two guys are something special. Just something special. They were. They were talent wise. I don't think you can argue with that. I mean, to kind of prove it, what he went on to do at West Ham. In terms of raw talent, both of them were sensational. I even remember Carboni coming back with Bradford. I think it was years later, and he was the best player on the pitch by a country yeah. man. No one could get. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, a few other things missing in both of their games, but in terms of raw talent and natural flair, fantastic. So, so. The, well, yes, you're right. We went into the doldrums there after really? the 2000. Yeah, this, yeah. this is really my bread and butter now. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that stands out? Obviously, that first few years, it, it was from my memory. It was it was really bad. It was really really bad. Yeah. Um, 
But then certain players came to play for us who were really bad as well. But they stick in the memory. Is there anybody there who, from that time, who you sort of, you know, after the Sabon days, anybody who sort of stood out during those sort of uh, lacklustre times that you, you still yeah. attach to love to? It was weird, isn't it? it? All sort of blurs into one. But Sabon, I know, I know you were going a bit beyond that. But Sabon's the one that stands out from from the initial relegation sort of period. I remember having the pinstripe. Wednesday shirt with the chuppa chups on the front, long sleeved, of course. Oops. Um, uh, what else? I was had a team ticket on the cop, and I got a season ticket. I mean, these were really bleak days. As a fourteen-year-old, I think maybe fifteen, I had a season ticket on my own on the north stand, just sat between these two blokes. Um, and that's what it does to people, doesn't it? That's what it does to young, particularly young lads growing up, and I'm sure young girls. Um, Hopefully, they'll start to feel more comfortable. We we see that a bit more often now. Um, but yeah, it's like why why is a young fourteen year old boy or girl or whatever going to stand between two random blokes that are thirty or forty years older than them, <laughs> watching a load of dross? Um, but that's what it what it does to you. So let's go on and let's have a think. So Sibon was obviously up there. Um, who did we have round then? We're talking Alan Quinn. We're talking Matt. I'm sure. Yeah, they, they, it's yeah. Well, Matt, I'm sure you know he he was a, a great homegrown player, wasn't he? He was, and he scored that. And one one of my favourite Wednesday goals is the um, the one against was it Watford in the League Cup? Yeah, Court fantastic final. Goal, yeah, 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 unbelievable. I remember being on the cop for that, and that was one of like a real magic moment. There was also some very very low moments. Um, <laughs> And we're getting knocked out of FA Cup on penalties to Scunthorpe. Again, I'd gone on my own. It was oh. absolutely freezing. I was thinking, what am I, I've got school tomorrow. What am I doing? So, um, so t- take you back here, going on your own. What about your mates? What what, what was the issue there? It's, what... weird. I, it's weird. A lot of my... So, I went, I went to a school. So, I grew up in North Sheffield. So, Chapel Town and Ecclesfield. Yeah. But my school was Fullwood Road. It's Catholic school. Right, there was kids from all over the city. So my schoolmates were mostly Unitedites, oh. a couple of Rotherham fans. So, so my best pal, the United, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, but there was a big standoff at school with who you support. My my brother's mates were all Wednesdayites. So as I grew up, and you get to more of a drinking age, I, there who I go to them, I still go to the match with now. Yeah. But my initial mates who I went to school, like I'm talking primary school here, yeah, because that's what yeah. you your bonds, yeah, yeah, early secondary. Um, a lot of them, a lot of them were United. I, one of my mates at school were a man new fan. I gave him stick for years about that. He weren't really, and then he came to Wednesday with me, and then he sort of drifted off. But yeah, you're talking like Chef Kikuchi years and Sibon and Alan Quinn, yeah. and yeah, I'm sure. Who else did I used to like? It's I don't know. They're like I just remember kits more than players because there's nothing really doing it for you back then, is there? No. Have you kept all your kits? There is a yes. There's a quite a few kits upstairs. Is uh, there? Various various places. Yeah. Hopefully, what's co- uh, passing them on, passing them down. What's come on? What's come out over the last few of these my Wednesdays is is this uh, infatuation with the Wednesday football kit. The, the like you've already alluded to with the yellow and, and the pinstripe, um, purpley pink pinstripe, mm. you can pick players out to what kits we're wearing. So, so you know, like you were saying about Carboni and that orange, the orange sort of Holland kit with the granddad yeah. collar, which was an iconic shirt in its time. Definitely, yeah, I, I had them all and I, I wish I'd have kept them all. Um, yeah, where they've gone. I mean, the orange one used to get really bobbly, I do remember it did. It did. It did. Yeah. The socks were amazing as well. The hoop socks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah did like that kit. It, it's there's there's quite a few companies now making an, uh, probably an awful lot of money on the back of retro kits. Yeah. Yeah. They um, are. I would just wish the. I mean, this is snobbery. This is elite kit snobbery. I just wish the like original brands would do it. Yeah. Like, well, Puma. Why can't you just whack it out? I'd pay for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But without I guess, a doubt. I guess wear them. It, 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 I mean, they've, they have done them with England kits, haven't they? I think they've done some replica Umbros yeah. going back to Italian 90 and stuff. And I've got I've got a, a replica of the 91 shirt that I luckily got John Sheridan to sign for me. But it is it is a replica, replica with the Asda on the front because I 
for some daft reason, when I moved house, I moved house many times, it disappeared. And I've got a horrible feeling. I binned it because I thought I've grown out of that and I've binned it. This is what happens. This is what happens. So I got married. i probably married seven years now. And for, for my brother was essentially, like, I had two best man, men. My best mate was a pig. And my brother was a Wednesday. Night. And I bought him. And bear in mind, he was like a 30 year old man at the point. I bought him, I'm probably a bit old. I bought him a long sleeve Wednesday shirt from that season. And it was the. Um, it was a couple of years before the playoff final season. It was a really nice shirt. And I, he, I don't think he quite got it. He thought I was buying him a football shirt. I'm not. I'm buying him a shirt for 20 years' time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because in 20 years' time, that'll look amazing and he's barely yeah. worn. And I think we all make that problem of, ah, I'm not going to wear that. I won't wear that again. When do you ever wear that? But then yeah. if you just persist and just put it away somewhere, yeah, it just become really relevant. And actually, it's just a memory, isn't it? It's, it's nostalgic, it all those things. Well, with my son, like I was saying earlier, my, my son's uh, 14, going on 15 now. We've got every shirt that he's had. He's had pretty much every home and away shirt since he was born. Because I was one of those sad dads who bought him the little mini kit as soon as he was yeah. born. No, bought no, him no. a mini kit. And, and, and he's had every one since. And my partner, she puts them away in, in a suitcase in the loft. So there will be a time where he can probably give his kids these, what will be retro shirts. And they'll, yeah, and they'll be pretty much mint condition as well, won't they? Yeah, exactly, especially when they're growing. So it's, it's. Uh, I mean, the the kits now, obviously, there's only so much you can do with blue and white stripes, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, but it's, the people, you'll still buy it. People will still buy it. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't overthink it. I mean, it was quite funny, actually, at the weekend, my four-year-old started his first football class. So he's gone there head to toe in a Wednesday kit Brilliant. with a brand new training top all over his kit, obviously, on my orders. So I'm walk it's really close to my house. So I'm walking him up and this car pulls up next to me and it's my best mate from primary school. <laughs> and I forgot he was taking his son to the same football session. I forgot we were on at the same time in the same place. And his son is head to toe in a United kit. And so <laughs> this weird moment, like, Probably 30 years since I first met him. We're both taking our sons to play football and they're both decked out in the opposing kits as we were 30 years earlier. It is it, it, yeah. funny when you first take your kids, uh, boys or girls, to their first football session and you actually see them out on the pitch and you know for a fact that they are living their mum's or dad's lives through their football yeah. kits. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, and it, you, yeah. you will see. And, and, and it also as well in Sheffield, it depends where you are. So my son's trained at, at Graves, he's trained at Thorncliffe, he's trained at Westfield. And like, if you go up to High Green, it, it's a predominantly Wednesday. But if you go to, to Graves, it's predominantly United. It, it's, yeah. it's great how it sort of portrays the, the, the area. So we've had a bit more um, success over the last few years. Um, yes. Obviously, when Carlos came in and, and the change of ownership, I take it, have you had a season ticket all the way running through then, Joe? Yeah, so obviously with a music career, it kind of stunted all that. Um, basically, I had better things to do on a Saturday. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not odd. <laughs> uh, yeah, so from like, I don't know, from, I mean, I went a lot. The annoying thing is I should have just bought one regardless because I always end up spending more money. But there, were, there was probably five to, to eight years where I didn't have one because I was doing music and I was always I have a gig in it a week and a rehearse, you know, somewhere else, or even at, at one point trying to play. Um, and then when it's settled back into more of a rhythm of life in Sheffield, I've um, I've had one for the probably the past. Oh, I don't know. I've been going for the past seven years now again. Yeah. Um, but in various ways. But my currency is probably like three or four years. But I've sat sat everywhere. And I kind of want to make that. I'm on the middle of the north, and I kind of always want to make that the seat now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seen some interesting football. Uh, you obviously got to 2005, where things look up for a little bit. Yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah. Huge day out, and I've since since um, become mates with Richie Humphreys. Oh yeah, and obviously he was playing for Hartlepool in yeah. Cardiff. Yeah, which was interesting. I would try, sort of chat to him about his perspective on that, and then it, his little football stories, which are quite amusing. <laughs> talks about, I think he talks about. Carboni or Di Canio and Pembridge having a fight, which is quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to feel it's because I'll get all the story wrong and, you know, I'll probably <laughs> wonder a few people. But it is it's quite funny. Um, 
yeah, and then things started to get started to get a bit better, didn't they? We obviously got promoted and the mind the gap season and all that, and then the chance series, the checkered chance series. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster, hasn't it, for the last five six years, sort of since uh, Milan sold to Chancery with, and then obviously Carlos came in. I mean, we had this. Then all of a sudden, we had this huge influx of superstars, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, he kind of went all in, didn't he? And he just fell short, unfortunately. Yeah. Did um, you go to Wembley to the playoffs? Oh, oh, right. This is this is painful. <laughs> I think you know the answer to this, don't you? Oh, I couldn't possibly say. Can't believe you've asked me that. So I think this is more. This podcast is becoming more about my best mate than anything else, isn't it? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, no, I didn't go to Wembley, um, and it still pains me to this day, um, even though we lost. So it was my my best mate getting married. Da da da. I'm well again. A couple of best men. He throws over these dates. Uh, and not really these, you know how, how it works out. Months and months in advance, I just say yeah. And then a couple of weeks after, I realise oh, it's it's playoff final day. That what if what if you know the eternal what if? And you're a bit like oh, it's Wednesday, it'll never happen. And anyway, you know all these you're talking twenty thirty lads have booked on. Everyone's paid the money, and it's getting closer and closer and closer. And we're getting to this playoff final. And I'm absolutely tearing my hair out. Um, all my family went down. I was down in London the night before. I've got a picture of me. And this, if you want a picture, I've got a picture of me in a Wednesday top out on Wembley Way, outside the ground the day before the game. Oh. Uh, and then we were up on, on a flight in the morning going to Rotterdam. And I can remember this is, I kid you not, as a fully grown man, I was crying in the toilets <laughs> of London City Airport because I couldn't go to the playoff final. Like oh. I was I was thinking of all sorts of things. I'm like, well what if what if this flight just gets cancelled and we just end up having to stay in London for the day? You know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try and get it cancelled somehow, but ultimately I had to give in and ended up watching it in Rotterdam. An amazing bar, but surrounded by a lot of United Heights, which wasn't very pleasant. Um so in some sort of really selfish way, I'm <laughs> obviously I'm only saying this out loud because it's a podcast, but Maybe in a really selfish sense, I'm glad we lost. But um, I'm obviously not. I'm obviously not. But um, yeah, it was it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. It, it, it was. It wasn't too great being there, to be honest. No, after no, the whole. No, but since people still say, you know, the Wednesday Heights did himself proud, and it was oh, nice without doubt. Here and you know, I'm just gutted I couldn't couldn't have been there. But um, yeah, it was a good day out. It was a good day out. But to lose at Wembley is not a good feeling whether it be new at Wembley. So I suppose your United fans sort of could empathise with you because I don't think they would have played. Yeah. Good. yeah. And, hopefully and I, hope you, I hope your best mate, I hope your best mate realises what a bloody good friend you are. That's it. He does. He still owes me for that. I think he'll owe me for eternity for that one. So then after that, um, the roller coaster certainly went downhill, didn't it? Because... Uh, yeah, we had obviously Carlos another semi another semi final against Huddersfield, which we missed out on, and and um, we are where just... we are now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this season. What do you think to this season? Uh, I mean, let's let's um, put last night's results aside. <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm really happy to talk about last night. Actually, really. quite reflective. Um, but yeah. this season, I think you have to. I think you have to see it as like a season and a half, don't you? Because uh, when more started last year, it, it wasn't great. The football wasn't great. It was a turgid. It wasn't an easy watch. And I think no one would have been surprised um, after that Sunderland game. Was it on New Year's Day? Or was it Boxing Day? Yeah, oh, gosh, yeah. Um, I went up. It was just New Year, wasn't it? Did you go to that, yeah? Yeah, yeah I went up there. Um, I don't get to many away games these days. I've got. A, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. I've got a form. And loads of kids have started going away now. They're always like, are you going, sir? Are you going, sir? I was like, I've got, I've got two kids, I can't go. Um, anyway, went up to Sunderland and I just thought I would be, you know, if if, if he doesn't if he didn't win his next game, he's gone. Mm. And then all of a sudden it clicked, didn't it? He found yeah. a way, he found a system and actually they started playing some really good football. Um, and I'm not saying definitely not a similar thing has happened this year. Um, he, the, a, a big rotation of players, 
And again, for the first three months of the season, I don't think they were a great watch, but the difference was they were winning. They were winning games yeah. of football. They were yeah. finding a way, um, sort of bullying the way through it. And I think, obviously, the, the stats speak for themselves. Since since they lost away at Plymouth, um, and I personally, along with probably thousands of other Sheffield Wednesday fans, could have killed Darren Moore that night for taking Bannon and Windass off at the same time when we were annihilating him. Yep. Um, I just about forgiven him. All right, I'll let him have it because we're doing so well. But <laughs> you, you can't, you can't knock him since that game. Um, they put together an unbelievable run, and by and large, they played some really good stuff. Um, and they, they, they are where they deserve to be. So I'm dead chuffed, dead proud of them at the minute. So a mini, a mini review of last night. What's your thoughts on last night? Um, last night, I, I thought we were going to lose. I think probably loads of Wednesday nights thought we were going to lose because they're they're banging form. Um, and I think we've probably limped through a couple of games recently, if I'm yeah. brutally honest. Yeah. I don't think we've looked great. Again, after 23 games, 22 games, it's going to happen, isn't it? That's not no criticism of anybody, especially with the, and with Byers and Windass being out. You've lost your two, not two of your better footballers, obviously yeah. Banners there. Um, so I struggled to see how we were going to look after the ball. But after those first 20 minutes, which were pretty damn poor, the goals they conceded were very poor. What they did was, I thought, was fantastic. Yeah. And how they showed a backbone, got back into it, and they should have put the game to bed. Yeah. I mean, Flint had enough chances to, to win two matches. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's, his goal scoring record, I think they said on Sky last night, he's, he's got the best goal scoring record of any defender over the past whatever seasons. So it's amazing how he missed those chances. And obviously, he'll be kicking himself. Um, so I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not bothered that we lost, but I just think I think the manner in which we went about it after going two 0 down to me shows will go up. I think that's what seems to be the general consensus, doesn't it? That seems to be the general consensus today. I mean, me and my son went last night, and and at twenty minutes there was five and a half thousand Wednesday fans pulling their hair out, and yeah. and but to see the way we came back, and to be honest, we had them. On, I thought we had them up until them getting the third. We had them on the ropes. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're a decent side. They're a decent side. And I think if, I agree, if I think if Byers and, and Windass had been on the pitch, um, we would have we would have beaten them quite quite easily, I think. Mm. Um, uh, and you're... Well, though, Wednesday. Those strength of character, physically strong. Yeah. yeah. And I think, hopefully, I mean, you know, I didn't, don't want to be disrespectful, but hopefully against Forest Green, you'll, you'll prove that. We, we we shouldn't need buyers and windows against no. against that team to the bottom of the league, aren't they? Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think when if if push came to shove, we can bully a lot of teams now. We can squeeze those points out of them rather than play for the points. Yeah, oh, I agree. I agree. Who's your who's your so current current crop of players? Who, yeah. Who's your favourite player? Who who are your favourite guys who have played for Wednesday? Well, special mention, and I know we're all guilty of this for like past players, but special mention to Kieran Lee. Oh, love absolutely love that man um, obviously he came back the other day with Bolton I missed it last season when he came back so a special mention to Kieran Lee because I just think he everyone wanted him to do well he was he was from an era before before the money wasn't he yeah. he came in as a full back um, really honest great footballer full of energy full of character and seemed like a dead nice bloke so a special mention for Kieran Lee um, but I think of the current crop I'd love to be like, you know, more interesting, but I don't see how you look past Bannon, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. I just don't, I don't think you can in terms of um, just, especially watching him in, in Hillsborough, at Hillsborough, sorry. Like I said, I don't get to see many away games and it's different on the telly when you see how he, how he controls the ball instantly, better than anybody on the pitch every single week. And that ball that he does incessantly over there right back to find Johnson or more recently, James, he just threads it through or puts it over the head and he does it two or three times a game and it always brings a chance. And mm-hmm. and to be honest, before, probably the best thing for the side, weirdly, was when he got injured. Yes. Because other players had to start pulling, the, not pulling the finger out, but just take a bit of responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was, at the start of the season particularly, he was so good. He was, so, he was like dragging us through games. And now it looks like he can express himself a bit more because his other players... Sort of covering covering his back a little bit more, but in terms of quality, I don't I don't see how you can see past him. Um, and I, yeah, 
think and it, it's interesting when you see other fans, don't you? Like I can remember a tweet from the start of the season saying like Wednesday should start a goal down if they're allowed to play with Barry Bannon. <laughs> because and, and I think you see it like when you, you very rarely at this level see him get rushed off the ball or closed down. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them have just said, well, you're not going to get near him. So just keep him at arm's length and then try and protect everywhere else. Yeah. Um, because yeah. he just finds that space all the time. Yeah. I think, I think some teams have just given up trying with him. He, he is. He is. Uh, and, and also as well, he joined us again when we didn't have a great deal of money. So he yeah. was here before, um, before Chan Siri came in. And he stuck with us, which is what I like. Is he, and I think this year we found a midfield that really complements him and allows him to do his, his stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think Byers has been class, obviously. I mean, there's obviously there's, there's players that stand out apart from Bannon. I think Byers has been massive. I think he takes the, takes a bit of pressure off Bannon because he can get a goal, he can make things happen. He, Byers is a every week should put a tenner on him getting booked because he throws himself in all the time. <laughs> But I think that helps, doesn't it? It helps, it helps rile the, the fans up. It helps get the, the team going. Um, Byers has been a real fine, hasn't it? And again, with Byers, it's not loads of money. No. I, mean, I don't know, Obviously, I don't pay his wages, but I'm sure he's on a decent white, but I didn't pay a fee for him. And I know, and, and, and signed him uh, when we went down as well from, from, a, from a championship side. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, it's it's, weird, isn't it? I think all the money can be a bit of a curse as well as a blessing sometimes. Yeah. Um, you still have to find your players and, and really think about what your, your side needs. I'm sure the rest of the league will say, shut up. I'd love to have the money and the wage bill. But the fact of the matter is, we go on about being a big club and I can see that's annoying for people, but that's why that's why players want to play for us. But, you know, it's not our fault. It's just That's just the game. And that's history, isn't it? We yeah. talked about that at the start. So yeah, it's, it's, what, are you sold on Darren Moore now? What do you think to the manager? Um... I think, I think you've got to be really. I've been, I've been set that twenty-three game record. It, I've been an absolute moron to say I'm not sold on him. Um, so, obviously, we talk about loyalty in football, and I think that should be should be afforded the managers as well as the players, and it should work both ways. So he's earned the right now for me to be having it to have a real good crack at the job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not always um, inspired by by his words after the games. I think it's just a big ball of cliches, but maybe maybe that's a defence mechanism. Maybe he just keeps the media. And he's obviously a good man. Everyone's, no one's got a bad word to say about him. Um, yeah. But I do find myself drifting off when he's, when he's <laughs> talking to the mind. But then again, <laughs> so who, who really cares? He's, he's doing a professional job, isn't he, in that respect. And all the yeah. media team love him, like Joe um, at the start. Loves him, so yeah. he must he must be doing something right. So who the hell am I to judge him? Um, and I think it can only be judged on his record, which is which is immense for Wednesday. To be fair, yeah, I think he's got the best win rate out of all the managers that we've had. Yeah, so... yeah. I mean, you've got to contextualise that, haven't you, with where Absolutely. we are, how yeah. we how we match up to our to our rivals in terms of spend and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you couldn't you can't ask for any more, can you? you can only no. as the old football analogy goes, you can only beat who's in front of you. So he, yeah, he can only win his matches. Yeah, so, yeah. Absolutely. Look, put it this way: it's not Yoss, is it? No, <laughs> thank God, or Tony Pulis. Pulis. <laughs> yeah. So, so obviously, uh, you're a musician mm -hmm. and teacher. You mix with uh, quite a few uh, Sheffield bands and Sheffield singers. We mentioned Richard Hawley earlier on. I mean, there's, there's, there's obviously the, the Reverend and the Makers, big Wednesday fans. Yeah. Self-esteem, big Wednesday fans. Yeah. Chris McClaw, Steve Bracknell, whichever, you know. Do you, you know when you meet them? Do you just sit down and go, did you watch Wednesday yesterday? How do you get on? You know, it's, it's just like normal. It's quite easy. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think that's like with anybody, isn't it? If you're finding in, and often, and often with people, there, and often blokes, I mean, obviously not always, um, you're in this sport or football. That's your way in. Yeah. Um, so it's like anything. Yeah, you, you chat about music. How's it all going? But uh, like an icebreaker for anybody. It's like you've been in the office or whatever it is. Did you watch, did you watch the game last night? How'd you get on? Um, so, yeah, it's great. You just we can often talk about football. And and it's weird how loads of musicians are Wednesday nights. Like, yeah. 
disproportionately. So um, there's not many United Art musicians, um, which I don't know. I don't know if that tells you something. I'll not go into that. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, we can always talk about the game. Always. I can only think of Joe Elliott from Def Leppard, who's um, a United Art. Yeah. Off the top of my head. There's Andy Nicholson, who used to be the bass player in the Arctic Monkeys. Ah, oh, yes. He's, he's a pal. He loves it. I think Todd Latizzi in United Art. He was um, a sort of DJ. Uh, and then, I'm oh, sure there'll be people screaming at this, but then I'm, I'm, I don't know, I kind of run out. Paul Heaton, isn't he? He's a United Art. So he's, uh... He is. He is. Um, which is a big shame, isn't it? Because I do like Paul Heaton. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do struggle with that one, though. So. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I don't know where that one came in. I suppose it was a choice between Hull or, or Sheffield United. And, and he, it was he a reason. The... I watched a documentary recently. I can't remember his reasoning, but uh, fair play to him. Fair play yeah. to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Joe, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, it's, it's great to meet you. Great to have a chat. Um, it's great to you know if if there's anybody out there you want to get on. I mean, obviously get your cousin and your best mate to listen to this now to to rig all these stories because it's been it's been brilliant. I, I love the fact that there are so many Wednesday fans out there and so many, like you said, alluded to in the music industry are Wednesday fans. And uh, let's hope next season we're uh, in the championship. Thanks very much. I'm sure we will be. Thank you for your time, mate. Oh, cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs>